Okay, I'm going to give you some quick and dirty advice on how to read a research article in about 10 to 15 minutes or less. Okay, so the first thing, if you're looking at uh, content only, okay, is you're going to read the title and do a quick screening to see if it's what you're looking for. If you're not quite sure, because sometimes titles are sort of obscure, then go to the abstract. And the abstract should give you, probably in the first line, the context of the study. And then within the second line, the purpose, and then a brief summary of the results, okay? And that should give you a sense of whether you want to dig deeper into it. But that gives you at least an overview of the article and what was found. And then I would read the first two paragraphs, not much more, just for the context of the study. Why is it being done? Okay, it should be within that context. And sometimes the purpose is there as well. And then you can skip down to just before the method section where you would generally see the research questions, um, what the person is looking for. So you can kind of jot that down and say, oh, this is what they're looking for in this paper. And then I would pop down to the conclusions at the end of the paper, because usually there's a conclusion section at the end of the paper that summarizes the results in a little more detail than the abstract. So that's how I would find the content, the content of the paper, okay? And then I'd have to also, and it's pretty important to assess the quality of the paper. So um, to do that, you'd have to go to the method section, okay? And that's where you're going to find most of the quality stuff. So you want to find the sample size. Is it large? Um, and large being usually somewhere around 100. I guess it could be 50, um, 50 to 100. Um, if it's smaller, then maybe it's a qualitative study you could determine that, but um, if it's a small sample size, then its application um, to other areas is limited. You might also check for the diversity of population, number of males, number of females, and if you're lucky, they'll go into a little bit more detail about where that population was selected, because that just determines whether the population is representative of the whole population. That's the idea when you do a study. You're sort of saying, well, I did this group, but it's representative of a larger group. You don't just want to say, oh, well, that's just the results for this group, and I can't say anything else about anything about other groups. And then if you want to assess the quality, what I do is I, I do a little uh, cheat on this. I do a control F and search for the word reliability. And if I can't find the word reliability or the word validity in the paper, that means that the data collection tools actually um, don't have reliability and validity. It hasn't been, they haven't been checked. And so you have to realize that if, if the data collection tools, the tools used to collect information are not reliable or valid, if you don't see internal reliability or some sort of construct validity, and, and you don't even have to know what these terms are, but if they're not in the paper, that means that care has not been taken to actually look at the quality of the data. And if the data isn't very good, then the conclusions aren't very good. Okay, so that's a quick, I mean, if you just want to do a quick and dirty of any paper, search for the term reliability and validity and see what's there. You almost never find validity. You will find reliability occasionally. Okay, internal reliability in a scale. Um, and then if it's qualitative data, um, often they refer to some sort of method and then, and then they just present quotes. And that's not really good quality data. So that's that's another hint that maybe the paper is, is maybe not of the highest quality. And then finally, I would check the references at the end just to see how many there are. There probably should be about 25 or 30 references. And most would be from peer-reviewed journals, maybe from books. But if they're from conferences or magazines or, or technical reports, um, this could be a problem. It just means that, that the literature review may not be that good. And also check the date of publications. If you're in the year 2010 and, and, and it's, there are all articles from 1990, that can be a problem, particularly if it's from a technology thing. And then you might also want to check for interesting publications that you might want to look up. So that's worth looking at the references. So that's a quick and dirty approach to uh, reading a research article.